oh, you're always a bit nervous going into the school year, but always more nervous when, you know, uh, big changes are on the horizon. So now that that's not necessarily the case, or um, I think a lot of people are definitely going to be happier. School may be going back in just under a week, but Bill 64 will not be going ahead this fall. And that is welcome news for many Manitobans, including many teachers, parents, and some city councillors. People spent a lot of time protesting this bill, putting up signs on their lawns throughout Manitoba. And the Manitoba Teachers Society recognizes the time and effort people put in. MTS is uh, elated that Bill 64 will not proceed. And it really speaks volumes to uh, our members raising our voice. And not only our members, but community members, neighbours, families, parents, everyone who's concerned about public education in Manitoba uh, wanted Bill 64 um, to be dealt with in this manner. And we're uh, very happy that we no longer have the stress uh, of Bill 64 hanging over our heads as we enter a new school year. The biggest concern for many Manitobans with this bill was the aim to dissolve elected school boards and replace them for a provincial body, effectively wiping out the local voice on the boards. City Councillor Marcus Chambers, like many, believes in education reform, but says that it cannot be a blanketed approach. Uh, I am for education modernization, and I do believe that uh, with that process comes consultation, ex exhaustive consultation with all stakeholders, with parents, with teachers, with administrators, and ensuring that we're moving in the right direction and not unilaterally overhauling the system. Uh, I think a lot of people in education would agree that there are things that can change for sure. Uh, but it needs to be done right. It can't be rushed. Uh, they need to listen to those reports. And again, uh, COVID is going to take a huge toll. So we need to see what that effect is before making any final decisions. Harrison says that while a uniformed system isn't necessarily a bad thing, the approach of cutting out the key voices of parents and students the Pallister government's Bill 64 proposed was wrong. Instead, he'd like to see other major concerns addressed when it comes to education changes in the province. But I think one thing that is not talked about a lot is that we also have the highest rates of child poverty in the country. And, uh, you know, you can't teach a kid that's hungry. It just, it doesn't work, right? <laughs> like, it, it, they have to have their, their basic needs met before, uh, you know, we can, we can really do our job. There are different needs throughout not only the city of Winnipeg, uh, as well as rurally throughout the province. So lumping everything into one pot and saying, you know, this is the standard for the entire province, uh, I don't think is, is the way to go. In Winnipeg, Brianne Foley, City News.